clear pixie bead, but I don't want to see that nail line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an ombre of this, this light milky white into a clear. And this will give me the ability to cover up my nail line. Also have a clear tip. See that? I actually told a lot of people, like, if a lot of guys are doing clear nails, you don't have to do have the whole nail exposed. You gotta cover up that nail line because if you do a whole clear nail, you see that nail line right here, it's not gonna look good. Especially if you're doing like a design or something like that. Use a nude, a, a nude, a, a, a peak, like a, you know, a nice natural color and just ombre it to clear. It'll give you that nice ombre to clear, see that? Yes, go ahead and hit that share button for me, please. Midday line. Share on your Facebook, whatever. So then I'm gonna leave that like that because later I wanna put pixie beads all over that. And these three are gonna be solid milky white. You don't have to move the powder until it's ready to be moved. Don't force yourself. You want the powder to be nice and medium like this. It's for you to move it. Use the whole brush. Brush from the outside in. Do your shaping while you're doing this too. So I just shape my nails where I'm at. Get it nice and taper, square. Let me go up for my second bead here. structure see I'm trying to blend in that second bead into that first bead give myself some good structure I need a little bit more just add a little bit more and right here just to blend it in Happy with what I have here, maybe just a little bit more in the green area. This right here. Not the cuticle area here. Go up to my apex area. Take my time, clean my side walls. Just like that. Make sure the bead marbles first before you put it on there. A lot of guys are just putting the bead on really fast, right when you just picked it up. Don't do that. It takes about three seconds for the, the powder to let you know, hey, you know, it's, I'm gonna be very runny, I'm gonna be too dry. Give it time. If it's runny, you hold on the bead a little bit longer. Um, don't just throw it on here and go through this whole fiasco of trying to get the bead to be less runny. So I like guys having flooding issues. It's flooding because you're putting on when it's too runny. It's better for you just to hold on to the, the brush for a little bit longer, maybe three, four seconds longer. Let the powder set a little bit, then put it on the nail. You put it on too soon, that will happen. See, I'm kind of sculpting this out because you know like I'm using my stiletto tips. Um, 
So basically, the tip has a little bit, you know, it's a little bit sharper at the tip. So I kind of wait for the powder to solidify a little bit so I can sculpt it to make it more square. You see that? Let's see, watch, I'll show you guys. Is that marbling? Once it marbles, use about three second rule with my monomer. My monomer is medium setting. That means that it's gonna be flexible. It's gonna have some time to it. Um, it's gonna dry a little bit quicker than, you know, a lot of the other faster monomers like Young Nails and Valentino and C&D and Mia Secret, but it gives you time to work with it. As long as you have, you know, as long as you're, you're moving at the proper speed, you'll have enough time to work with it. Um, it won't run all over the place. So it's a very decent monomer. I'm gonna be out of stock again pretty soon from what it looks of it. I just restocked the other day and now my warehouse is telling me we're almost out of stock. But the problem is monomer is becoming more and more scarce. The raw material is going up in price. So the vendors are not, the distributors, they're not um, selling out monomer right now. They're waiting for the new price updates so they can give us new price updates. It's, it's one of those games of supply and demand, unfortunately. So we won't be able to get monomer until they figure out how much their raw material costs. And then it goes up from there. And we won't know how much we're buying it for and we have to adjust our prices like they have to adjust their prices. It's like gas prices, Jesus. I hate it when that happens. When they tell us, no, nope, we can't sell you any monomer right now because we don't know the, the raw material price. And we're like, yikes. I know it's gonna be happening. Price is gonna go up. See that supply and demand that's why people can't complain about our prices really people complain about nail prices we have to deal with you know my supplies consistently change in price all the time depending on it's usually the 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 monomer acetone and stuff like that 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 raw material always changes acrylic not so much because there's so much competition for acrylics Raw materials like acetone, gels, monomer. They're the ones that, because monomer actually is used for other purposes other than just nails. So that affects it too. These are my uh, clear stiletto tips, Chantel. And I just clip them down. Chanel, um, I just clip them down um, to make a coffin. In the future, I'll have long, uh, I'll have long coffin shape, but for now, it's just the coffin tips. I literally forgot to put the second bead for this one. Holy cow. <laughs> I'm already talking about the price of monomer. I'm, I forget this whole second bead. Yeah, probably like, what's he doing with that finger? <laughs> <laughs> nothing, absolutely nothing. Few weeks, I believe, for Vegas, and then we have our last class in San Jose and West Coast. Yes, still interested in the San Jose class. There's still some seats left. July 19th and 20th. Tino Vo and I will be there. And of course, I'm now gonna do my glitter nail. I'm just gonna do a nice thin layer, and I'm gonna cap it. Because the last thing I wanna do is drill into this glitter. Because if you drill into the glitter, it's actually going to cause it to look different. So I, I want to just do a nice glitter nail, nice thin coat, then I'm going to cap with the clear. So when I drill and file it, the glitter won't be affected. What happens when you drill in the glitter, guys? You have a metallic look to it because the glitter gets uh, broken down. cap this one too because I'm gonna keep this one clear there you go um, this one from chisel is called OM 80 a
Uh, I'm gonna do like kind of a. There's gonna be some stone work. Um, we're doing some rhinestones and we're gonna do some uh, pixie beads. See this glitter, you gotta be careful because um, it has little glass pieces into it too. So definitely you gotta be careful with that because if you drill into that, it's not gonna look good. It has chunks of glass and stuff in there. Chunks of like big glitter. And I still do a very thin coat, make sure I get good coverage. And then I'm gonna cap everything with clear. Get the cuticle nice and flush. I hope the monomer price doesn't go up too much. I'd hate to have to increase. Usually it's like almost like a few dollar increase, but from what I've from what I've heard from a lot of the vendors and a lot of the uh, supply stores, this might be one of those the biggest jump. But I hope I hope I can stay. I'll probably take the hit for a partial of it, maybe half, and I'll just sell it. I don't want to jump the price up too much. I'm not a big fan of boosting the price up because of what it is supply and demand but this monomer is pretty damn amazing so I'm done with the glitter I'm gonna put that away for now so I flip this over so I don't get any more glitter into my monomer what's that okay so the ring finger so again I'm gonna do a white to clear ombre So I just blend right here. I want to keep my tip clear still, but I don't want to expose my nail tip, my nail line. That's very ugly. So be careful when you're doing that, guys. This gives you the ability to have a white tip still, but your nail line not exposed. That's why I prefer to do glitter last, but it's okay because I'm filling this whole nail up with pixie beads anyways. So I don't mind a little bit of glitter in there. See that? You see no nail line, but you still have that white, clear tip look. So I'm gonna save this later for some encapsulation. And these are all solid now, so I'm probably gonna need a little bit more monomer right here. In a second, let me finish this up. Hola, where's everybody watching from? Let me know a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm just an enthusiast, or I'm a nail tech, getting my license. So I'll read the comments later. I'll be able to kind of meet, meet the supporters, and those of you guys have always been supporting the lives. second bead this is gonna be my bead for my apex and also I told myself I do glitter last but I couldn't resist you see what happens the glitter gets contaminated into the monomer and you have a little glitter here and there so usually I'll just go through the whole set before I do my last do all the solid color first, then the glitter. Shaping my nail. Make sure I get the shape. The smoother my application, the easier the work I have later on for me. Glitter. Okay, I'm actually going to clean my monomer out real quick. Get rid of all this glitter. New paper towel. There's a shortage of monomer, but I have a shit ton in my studio. I always keep 10 bottles at the end for myself. <laughs> I 
again. Damn it again. Someone got it late. They must have. <laughs> oh, this has to be it again. Yeah. Here we go. I always do a two bead. Not always, but it gives me the ability to control my, my powder better and build better structure for my nails. I'm sculpting now, when you sure? Remember, when you use the little tips, the tip area kind of caves in a little bit. So you gotta make sure you'll be able to sculpt it out and make up for that. Or else it's gonna look more like a ballerina than a coffin, to be honest with you. So a lot of people that use this to little tips, they don't they don't do that. They just, you know, shape it towards how the um, actual nail looks. You don't want to do that. Because it'll start to come in more of a point at the tip. So you gotta wait for the pot to dry a little bit, sculpt it out, and use your flat head and see that? Just shape it up, boom, you have a nice perfect coffin. You think I'm buying a gallon of mine, right? Uh, yeah. What's up, Tao? How are you? Nail class for Memphis? Ooh. You guys are gonna start seeing a lot more of my team doing lives now. Let's make sure I keep content on here for you guys. Different type of content, really. As you guys know, I don't really do press-ons and I don't really do sculpt, but a lot of them do do sculpt and press-ons, so they'll be able to show you guys how to work with like demo hands and stuff like that. I really do enjoy that, the aspect of it. Oh, thank you. Hopefully they'll hold up the standard and yes, please do support them just like how you guys support me. There'll be a few changes to the page coming up soon. Um, I don't have them schedule up when they're gonna do certain content. So this page I created and all the support you guys have contributed to it, you guys should be able to get back in the sense that you guys will be able to I want to give access to one, the ones I trust and you know know that can deliver good content. They'll be able to help you guys with other stuff. So like I said earlier, uh, I'm using my 14 right now. It's crimped. This is a four, oh, this is a 16. Woo, sorry, he's in a 16. Sorry, I said 14. So remember that glitter one? You don't wanna drill into this glitter. So we're gonna cap it with a little bit of clear before we drill into glitter.
nice and thin, okay? You don't want it too thick at the thickness of the nail. This is it for this uh, set. We're gonna be doing a lot of stone work later on, some stones and also some pixie beads. I'll show you guys how I use those caviar beads, those little clear ones. A lot of people are using them wrong. I can tell by the pictures, the way they're using them, that they're not gonna last. Of course, this one also. Remember the tip is very thin, so we're gonna just do slightly up here because we have structure up here already. I'm gonna use majority of this powder to go down the tip area. And with clear, you gotta be very careful. Work slow. Don't try to rush it. It's gonna be runny, okay? Work slow so you don't have bubbles. The faster you work, the more you, the more you beat into this powder, the more really for you have bubbles. I still gotta shape my nail when I'm doing this. Can't totally ignore it. It's very important, the more even your nail, the less work you do later. So take your time in this, especially with the clear. Take your time. So a lot of people that do clear and capsule clear glitter powder, they don't do this. And then later on when they drill into the glitter, let's say you have a blue glitter or a, a pink glitter. That blue glitter, that pink glitter is not made blue and pink. This is a silver glitter that they just coat it with pink or blue, right? So when you drill into it, that silver metallic look will come through and it'll make your glitter look completely different than what you wanted it before. And let's say you have chunky glitter and all of a sudden you drill into it and file into it, your glitter is no longer chunky. Your glitter is now more fine, more flaky, uh, more like, uh, like less chunky. So you kind of take away the look from the glitter. So be careful how you want the look. If you want a chunky look, then don't, you have to cap it. Because you drill into it, it's gonna take away that look, okay? Very important. Now, a lot of people know that. And then you do this design that the client wanted, it looked great, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, after you're done, you're like, what? why does this look so different? That's because of that reason right there. Glitter is very, very um, funny to work with. You have to really think about what you're, gonna, you're doing with it. It's always good to encapsulate glitter. Do it very thin and encapsulate, because you protect the way the glitter looks.
work going clear, work slow. Don't put too much pressure into it so you don't get bubbles. You guys ever seen people that get this really crystal clear look? Because it's not contaminated. No bubbles, no nothing. Running out of monomer here, but that's all I need for this last finger, so I'm not gonna really have to put in new monomer. Maybe some just to clean my brush. Other than that, I don't really need that much monomer. Just a little bit more powder here. I have to put a little bit more monomer. <laughs> I don't want to waste it, just love it. I don't know. Because I'm not going to be too. I'm, monomer's price is going up, man. I can't be wasteful. Everything's <laughs> going up. It's crazy. It is what it is. Supply and demand. Yep. Fortunately, monomer is not used just for nails. It's actually used for a lot of other things. Okay. I'm use the rest of this monomer to clean my brush. Especially a bigger brush. I'll show you guys. Ooh. I'll show you guys how to clean your brushes, okay? I know a lot of you guys probably. Put brush maintenance is very important. You see this brush? Because I use clear, see how it's sticking together? This acrylic in here is still soft. See how it's still soft? Okay, you can force it out. Look at it. This is the clear powder. Clear powder does this. If you use a lot of encapsulations, a lot of you guys do, you gotta clean it out. Okay, you see that? It's very sticky. This is clear powder. It does this to every brush. Clear powder is not like pigmented powder. It really gets into your brush, especially because I was using with a kind of a dirty monomer. See, you can get it out because you've been using it with monomer. But if you leave it sitting in there for like 30 minutes, yes, it's gonna harden up. But now it's still soft because we've been dipping this brush into monomer this whole time, right? So you can see, I just start pushing out any excess. This is a big excess right here, chunks here. Nudge it out. I'm not pulling the hair. I'm pushing from the base of the hair out, okay? Right then, and I'm gonna keep dipping my brush in and I'm gonna clean out all the excess. This is tiny residue that will seal up. This takes about a few minutes, but it'll save your brush. You do this, you save your brush. And for me to check, all I gotta do is this. I use my finger, I feather through. If I feel like it's sticking together, then I know that that spot still has more acrylic on there. So, like rightly so, it's rinse and repeat. You get the monomer in there, and you push forward, pull the brush back lightly, and that'll clean out any excess powder. So ideally, when you feather through your brush, it should go like that. See that? You won't feel anything sticking to it. If you do, you'll know that there's acrylic there, and you can just go through and break it out, use a bit of monomer. But here you go. That's how you clean your brushes, so make sure that you don't get acrylic stuck in your brushes after you're done using them. Best time to clean your brushes after you're done using it because you can consistently go into monomer. So now I'm gonna just seal everything up. Training my brush, because it's crimped to how I like it. And I'll store it like this, and it'll, it'll stay like this over time, okay? I do that every time I'm done with the set. That's why my brushes last so dang long. I can use a brush for like years if I wanted to. There are people that have my brushes. Doesn't matter how good quality your brush is, if you don't take care of it, it's gonna go to shit. My brush is still like new. I bought your brush like a year, year and a half ago. Wow, really? See, I just mentioned it and somewhere I said it in the comment. Yeah. I teach people how to, to use my brush also, you know? Especially a good quality brush if you just take care of it. She's had that brush for a year, year and a half. Bet you she's never used a brush that long in her lifetime. It's 
crazy. I still get people that send me screenshots and pictures of their brush when they, the very first edition one. I know there's the first 50 that I had one, but I lost it. And there's some, there's some people that actually have them. The first 50 brushes is actually labeled differently, um, a logo differently. So I know exactly. Those are my trademark one. There's actually people that still have them. Still use them to this day. And that's crazy. This is the milky white. So you can get it from Not Polish. You can get it from uh, Ch Chisel, Chisel 121. Um, Not Polish, it's just called milky white. I think 101. Um, I think Wave Joy has one too. I forgot the name. A lot of companies have this uh, this type of white. Of course, I'm gonna do quick shaping. My shaping should have been done through my application. I really don't have to shape that much, to be honest with you. How quickly that you can shape these look how crisp the shape is do it through your application okay don't try to shape with the hand file the hand file just helps you crisp the shape up a little bit okay me they have shaping problems I spent about less than five minutes to shape these I'm an hour from Memphis I love <laughs> hopefully I mean San Jose is our last West Coast class we have a lot of people that are flying out to San Jose it's fun have a quick vacation at it People are local, some people are in Cali, they cut travel for them. Very quick, honestly. I think um, the biggest uh, handicap for a lot of people is that they utilize this hand file too much and they overfile. Overfiling means that you mess up the shape by drilling too much of it off.
I have this new project coming up. You guys might enjoy. I'm gonna start recording like snippets, videos of my journey. It's been like when I prepare for class and where I, where I travel. And towards the end, I'm gonna clip everything together from my point of view and also from Tino and Vina's point of view. It'd be kind of like an experience for you guys to see how what we go through when we travel or teach a class and stuff like that. Kind of like the behind the scenes. And I'll post on YouTube. Hope you guys enjoy that. I've been always wondering what I want to do with my YouTube since I already do a lot of nail videos here. It would be kind of redundant to have the same type of videos on YouTube. So. Dun, 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 dun. Files? Generally, I don't really use. I have a bunch of them. I keep about a hundred of them around. Um, when I hand file, maybe. But generally, you can sanitize these if you want. I just don't see the point of drilling, like throwing them away. I know that school they they teach you not to do that because they actually they when you do that you're working with natural nails. This, you're not really working with natural nails, so there's no really natural nail filing. It's just acrylic powder. I probably use one file for a client because I, I use it a lot, but I see a lot of people don't really throw them away. I don't blame them either. These are expensive. I mean, I guess they're not really that expensive if you factor in, but it's kind of waste because sometimes I barely even file at all. I mean, using those small ones, I don't rec I don't, I don't mind. If you, if you throw them away if you're using the small ones, fine. But the big ones, it's kind of waste, I feel like. I do have a lot of filers. I keep 100 on stock all the time. Yeah, in, in nail school, they'll tell you to throw them away every client. But... Or you can just give it to your client and use the same one. A lot of people do that. And have, but sometimes the clients will forget to bring it back. When you're working with natural nails, you're filing on the natural nail shavings. I understand how those could be should be thrown away, but this is just acrylic powder, so unless you really worn it out. I've seen people when use barbicide to clean them and reuse them. That's a good idea too. But generally I throw them away. Let's do a little bit of hand filing right here. Just to smooth it out a little bit, same with the time. If you do a smooth application, hand filing is the way to go. And also it breaks down the bulkness for you a little bit before you use the drill. You're definitely gonna go through with the drill also. So I can't really get the cuticle area without using the drill, can I? So yeah, this file will probably be done after I'm using it because I'm using it for hand filing, so it wears it out a lot. What do you want? You have redstone. A what? Redstone. Redstone? No, I don't. Actually, pretty quick. It'll save you a lot of time. And don't worry about hitting the client's uh, cuticles because you have the apex area and you go straight uh, towards the apex area. It actually has a little bit of bump, so you won't be able to do that. Should be fine.
this way it's very efficient. I use 100 100 grit for this. You can use 80 80. But I think 100 100 is just plenty. It gives you like an even surface, like a straight surface almost. And back in the day, before the drills came along, even in nail school right now, if you go take your examination for nail, for your practical, for your license, they don't allow you to use e-files, you know? You're not allowed to use it. So you have to learn how to hand file, basically hand file around the cuticle area also if you wanted to, but I don't, I'm gonna use my drill for that. Save me some time. favorite part is the cuticle work. I'll use my sharp 501 bit. This one we get a little bit close here. This is a sharp bit. If you want the safety version, I have the safety version also. But I like using the sharp one because the sharp one allows me to get into the cuticle area. Nice and flush. This crit gives so I don't have any lifts. You have to blend out any excess. Remember, you clear cap this with the glitter, it doesn't have any effects when you do that. And generally, this area has already been smoothed out, so it should be easy breezy to go through and just smooth everything out. The more work you spend on your application, the less work you spend on doing everything else shaping, filing, drilling, hand filing, all that becomes a lot easier. Keep huh? the cuticles nice and clean. You don't want to spend too much time in the cuticle area. The more time you spend there, the more chances you'll have to, you know, cut the client. So I like to do a nice sharp bit, and if I just want to go through it, get over and done with, nice and clean. That cuticle will be nice and flush to the natural nail bed, and that will allow the nail to grow out without having any lifts. So when you guys having pop off and lifts, is from this. Yes, proper prep, great. Primer, great. Getting all those excess, all those extra stuff, okay? Unnecessary. Well, not, it's not unnecessary, but it's not the main culprit whenever you have lifts and and pop-offs. It's from this right here. The ability to seal in this cuticle, because in two days, three days, when this starts growing out, how you flush this cuticle area matters. It's gonna affect how the nail grows out, and there's gonna be any lifts, and the lift starts. The lifts can't start if it's a nice and flush and even to the nail, to the natural nail bed. And yes, you can, over the time, you'll you'll get the feeling for it. You'll know when to stop when you get to the close to the nail bed, okay? Just go right through, clean it up. 
smooth out the edges. And this is already, I already hand filed, so it's very easy for me to go through and just smooth this out with my five in one bit. This is not like a normal five in one bit. You guys see a lot of five in one bits. It's like a vertical cut. This is a diamond, cross diamond cut. Um, it's, so it's, actually I, I like it better because it smooths surfaces better without leaving little cuts and indents. It's nice and smooth. He has an awfully quiet during these lives now. I remember back in the day, I used to get a million and one questions. That just means my communities, my community have, have been so well educated that they don't have, I need to ask questions anymore. Proud of you guys. <laughs> yeah, they're so well educated now. It's just true, a lot of people that have been watching me for so long, they probably had all the questions answered, all the problems solved. They probably just enjoy watching it. Back when I first started, everybody was like, ah, this, that, that. But now I get less of those and just more serious questions. That, and I know this part is kind of therapeutic. A lot of people like to watch this drilling process. Because I, I watched I watch, um, someone do it yesterday. I was watching someone's lives yesterday, and I was like, oh, wow, I like this. Sitting there on your phone watching someone work. I don't think it's more therapeutic than physical work, I'd say. The shape's still kept in form. Oh, Marisol, thank you so much. That's, that is exactly what it is, huh? That's why I'm always seeking different avenues to reach. Pretty soon I'll have my... Yes, I have so many plans, so many things coming up. Yes, I'm going to be so blown away by it. It. I think it's almost time for me to launch the apparel line. That's just, a, that's just a crazy concept for that. I'm thinking of just giving uh, like a percentage of the proceeds for the apparel line. And I'm gonna cut a check for um, nail schools, nail academies to use for. Um, tuition for the students. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Be an amazing experience for the students. For the community, those who wants to wear the manifest apparel. Every time you purchase part of your pro the proceeds goes to someone getting their license. I'm a big advocate for license nail tech. You guys haven't noticed. Just where you see me wear those manifest t-shirts before. I was testing out the quality of the materials. I like it, I like it.
Uh, you watch and you grow as well with all your parts that help us out. Thank you. Drop new gems. Yes. Okay. I think only the, my, uh, I think the students from Texas are the ones that have the, the, the apparel. You guys got the first manifest shirts before they even existed. Now I'm gonna launch the joggers, sweatpants, hoodies, pullovers, t-shirts, hopefully a lot of stuff. So it'll be a clothing that inspires. You guys will like it. Oops, sorry. Get a little acrylic on the skin there. I'm gonna clear it out, make sure I get it nice and flush. Here. I'll show you. When's your birthday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, good. The pixie bees will last you. Good. Till tomorrow. <laughs> it's a wear and tear design. It's not it's meant to be stay on forever, you know. Yeah, I know. So I guess they're using the pixie bees, those uh, caviar bees, the clear ones. They're not supposed to last. But I'll show you how to keep them on as best as possible. A few little tips and tricks to you to do that. Oh, sorry, a little bit zoomed out there. And you finish off with the thumb. I'll tell you, this drill bit is freaking amazing. Cannot go wrong with this drill bit. I pretty use it for everything. Once it's well seasoned, as soon as you can use it enough where it's like sharp but not too sharp, you pretty much can do anything with it. And this is the sharp version. But once you know, like anything, when you use it a lot, it gets broken down. so well, breaks down so well. Generally, set should take you about an hour, hour and a half. Those guys are above two hours, three hour mark. You gotta focus on your application, go back to your basics, save yourself time doing all the other, other steps. You'd be surprised, going back to the basics. When I say that, I mean go back to your application, the one, two, threes, putting on tips, prepping, all that stuff. I guarantee you that's where you'll find the extra time you're spending doing all this extra stuff that you may not necessarily need to do. Hey, wash your hands. I'm going to change my gloves. Okay, for the pixie beads, I got a little bit of a vial of pixie beads here.
you're gonna need some builder gel or jewelry glue. I'm using builder gel right now. I ran out of, out of jewelry glue. Um, basically, the jewelry glue is a little small container of like the rhinestone glue. I'm gonna do those nail. I'm gonna do that first to show you guys how to do that. This is almost out. I gotta throw this away. A little bit dirty, but. And I'm gonna use this thing just to save myself. Something to apply it with. I use my flat brush. It's kind of a used up one. Also some, not my top coat. Some top coat. A lot of times when we use these things, we run into issues where there's too, it's too bumpy. As in like, it's gonna be, it'll catch on things. You need to figure out a way to do that where it's not gonna catch on things. A lot of people I see, he has pour and all over the sides and that's gonna get caught on stuff. I will show you right now what not to do. So we're gonna do a nice thin coat of this first. Make sure you apply it everywhere you need it to stick. So this is well and good and all, right? It's a nice thin coat. The key is after this, we do a, a, no, a non-cleansed top coat. Use mine if you want. Mine's very nice. And we're gonna do a nice thin layer of that on here also. Because the builder gel is thicker, so it, 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 it won't sink this, this, the caviar is in. So you do a nice coat of top coat, which should be lighter, and it, it will allow the caviar beads to sink in so that you don't have, they don't stick up too much. Any kind of builder gel, any kind of builder gel will work, okay? Get a nice coverage. Now the key point is the sides. You don't want any beads on the sides, okay? That means if this guy on the side, it's gonna get caught. You need to push it over, show where it needs to go. Keep your shape. So now with the actual top coat on there, actually the, the beads will actually sink in more, as in it'll, it'll bond into it more. And it does, I'm gonna put some in the top corner here. And that will give you the ability to have the beads not stick up too much and then it will last longer because it won't get caught on anything. Because remember, when if it's, you see a lot of people use this, I see pictures where just, you can see the actual bead sticking come up from it. You don't want it, you want this kind of texture look right here, see that? And I'm gonna push the sides in because I don't want any of the sides, this is where it's gonna get caught. I wanna keep my shape also. It's the builder gel with the top coat. It gives me a nice coat. Look at that. You still get that look. You won't see any other sides. That's okay. Because when it sticks from the sides, I know dang well it's gonna get caught and it's gonna get it's gonna fall off. Well, these are last as long as possible. These are a wear and tear design, okay? It means that it's not meant to last forever. But we can try our dang best to keep it so it lasts as long as possible. So the builder gel gives it a nice coat on the bottom for it to be, um, you know, stick. Um, the top coat allows it to stink in a little bit more and bond better. And you have the best of both worlds. Remember, these are all attached together. So if you have too much of the beads stuck to the sides. What's gonna happen is it's gonna actually get caught, pull off, and then it's gonna pull all the beads that are stuck to it off. We don't want that. Let's do another thin coat of top coat on top of the builder gel. See that? And we just rinse and repeat the same process. It's crazy. Whenever I see people that post pictures and it's all over the sides, I cringe because I know dang well the moment she puts her shirt on 
or like even grabs anything, the sides are gonna come off right away. It's very important to push the sides in. Tap down the top. Tap it, just tap lightly because what's gonna happen, you're gonna feel it sink in. You're gonna still get that texture jewel effect, but it actually won't last longer, I promise you guys. You see? This one's a mixture. I used to sell these, I'm out of stock of these right now, but it has the, the jewels and the caviar beads as a mixture. You see what I mean by it sinks in? It's sunken in, instead of having it stick out where only like half, like not even half a piece of the beads in there, it sticks in. And of course, because I have this, you didn't waste a lot of it. Because a lot of times you guys waste too much of this. You need a catch tray. That's probably the only reason why I sold these on my website is because I need people to have a catch tray. Because literally all that would have gone, gone everywhere. And that's that. And we'll do, you see? And you don't top coat this. A lot of people top coat this afterwards. If you top coat this, you're not going to have that texture look. You guys have that texture look. See how nice that looks? Look at that. Now we're gonna do some stone work for her birthday here. She showed me a really ugly style, but I'm gonna <laughs> change that. Sometimes when clients show me something they want, I'm like, mm, we're not doing that. I know you You always change it though. That's why I don't care. Sure, 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 sure. You always, I'm like, something like this. Oh, I gotta bring back bling kit. I see a lot of people just struggling with bling, bling kits. I must bring it back. No white, does no white top coat make a difference in white top coat? Yes, it does. Um, no white top coat, uh, you, you should not be using white top coat ever. There's no reason why you should be even using white top coat anymore. It's an old generation of top coats. Um, I don't know where you're getting it from, but definitely stay away from that. Now we have no white top coat, you don't need, you don't need all that, okay? Please, if you're still using white top, a white top coat, I don't know why. Um, who gave you the idea? But please stop. It's not necessary anymore. It's a, it's an old generation of ways of doing things. Help, help me, help you. Okay, stop. The only place I can see that you're getting white top coat from is probably jealous. They're very old. Com uh, they're very old school when it comes to that, but it's not necessary. There's no design that requires a white top coat. There's no, no, not, no, nothing that requires a white top coat. To be honest with you, on the fact that you want things to stain your nail, white top coat leaves a sticky residue that can cause staining of the nail. Until there's a useful white top coat, again, which I doubt.
Come on, get on there. Thank God. Hell to work with, but they look so damn good, so. Just gotta. One day I'm gonna come up with a new product, some kind of product to use these a lot easier and make a shit ton of money. Until that day comes, I have to deal with this. Tweezers. No, not tweezers. Some kind of glue or sealant that works really good with this, but not as sticky. Oh, they're really small, that's why. Okay. No way tweezers will work for these. Just the stones because they move a little bit. That's one of the reasons why I like using builder gel when it comes to stonework because I can actually still make adjustments. We use like kind of a glue, actually, it glues too fast. See that? It would just nudge everything over. It's not sealed in until I actually cure it, so. Convenient, huh? A lot of people use kind of a glue base. I don't know, uh, because that's glues right away. That looks good to me. Honestly, stone placements, you want my advice? Really just don't think about it too much. A lot of people think about it too much and that's, that's why they run into issues with doing stones because they, they overthink it and then they want to do this, do that, too much stuff. Just go for it. I first started doing stones just freestyling. Like if I wanted to cure this right now, I can cure it real quick and do more, but Or I'd just do it all one time. Yeah, you can cure as you go. When you have the, you know, whatever stones you want in place. You think, okay, I like that. Up to you how you want to go on about it. This way I'm not too worried until I actually seal the stones in with the curing. As long as I haven't cured it yet, the stones are still able to be made adjusted. I can still make adjustments to it.
it. Now I'm a little bit quicker this time than my other one. Because I know what I'm doing. I can move a little bit faster. So there is a reason why I do these stones, these small cavity ones on the side. These are my support stone guys. This keeps my stones together. As in, these stones right here will hold the side in for me. So that when she does touch her hair or whatever her clothes, it does not gonna get caught on the big stone. These small stones are gonna be like the support stone. That's what keeps, you guys, you guys gotta understand when you're doing stone work, you gotta make sure you have support stones to support the big, the bulk of it. Cause these big stones here, they have a really harsh size. I mean, it, it, it comes up. So for me to take away this harshness, I'll put these small support stones on the side, like here and here, so that when they do touch something, it's not gonna go crazy and get caught on something because these stones are here to help it get caught. Does that make sense? You see a lot of people do stone work and you wonder why it lasts? This is why. You have to position your stones, you gotta know how to do them correctly. There's a, there's a reason for everything. It's not just because it looks good. Yes, they look good, but there's a reason why they're there. You see what I mean? If something were to get caught on the side, it wouldn't get caught on the big stone. These small stones will actually help solidify in and help. And this is the reason why I position them like this. Even these small stones right here has a purpose. These small ones that goes down the side, because this big stone right here is it's gonna it's gonna lift up from the nail, right? So I need the small stones to create a softer side, softer edge, so that when something is caught, you see that you don't you don't see the lift from it. Gem, gems dropping, literally. Pick them up, guys. Pick them up quickly. Quickly, everyone. Pick them up. Pick them up. That's why you see a lot of people just put one gem on, one big stone on, and then they say, oh, my stone fall off in a couple of days. Yes, because that big stone is going to get caught in everything. Hello.
Go with your brothers and sisters. Surprisingly, when I first started doing nails, I really hated doing stones. I never did stones. It's good when I was kept doing lines. People asked me, are you going to do rhinestones today? Are you going to do rhinestones today? And one day I was like, you know what? I'm going to start doing stones. And I actually, I, I like it. Actually, pretty, my freestyle is actually pretty pretty nice. I just go off my head, just do whatever. Really no reason, no means to an end. And I figured out that I, I actually pretty do pretty good stone work. And now everybody, everybody respects my stone work. So you never know. And there are people that are out there that are known for stonework that really don't do that that well, to be honest with you. I feel like being perfectionist allows me to be able to do my stonework really well because I'm actually very picky. Okay, and we're all set. Final. This is the, my no wipe top coat. Probably one of the best top coat you're gonna get out there. Money back guarantee, y'all. If you don't like this top coat, it's nice and medium, not too runny. Gives you a nice shine. Very thin coat. I don't top coat this one. This one I will. I just go around the side, seal everything in. Remember, and I want to go over the stones itself because I don't want it to. I'll take away the the shine from painting over the cut. This top coat is everything. It won't run all over the place. Nice and thin coat. It cures pretty well. Nice and shiny. A lot of top coats are very, very runny. Can make you lose your shape. I like my top coat a little bit medium, but not too thick. This is very nice thin coat, okay? Go around the stones, seal in the sides, that's it. And this should last. This right here, this design stones, it should stay for whatever long she wears it.
forgot she had a thumb. <laughs> And there we go. It's a nice birthday set with some stones. Get some cuticle oil. Just got some a glitter nail. Ooh. 